you know, sticking to the cardboard. And, you know, this brings me to something uh, a lot, you know, in the past I've seen cases where we have dozens of, of slides and uh, multiple smears from passes. Really the object isn't to create as many slides as possible. Uh, generally, uh, you, the more slides you make, you dilute the specimen more and more and it's not necessarily going to get you more cells by making more slides. Uh, a lot of the times uh, I smear two or three passes in less than eight slides and, and, and getting good material for the, the cytolite, which I'll demonstrate now. So after we've done our smears, we have the material in the hub and, and, and optimally it's better to do it quick, quicker, but I was showing the hair dryer technique. And you just take the, the syringe, just as it is, with the plunger, put it, put it in the uh, container, pull up on the, on the, on the suction, and you let, you know, I like to let that cytal light or cytal rich red kind of just percolate in the bottom of the, of the needle. I know it's rinsing the material in the hub then. And then I just express it. And when you're doing that, you're spraying, you're spraying all the cells that were residually left in the hub and in the needle into this material. What we'll do when we get it at the lab then is we will we'll use this and we'll make a cell block out of this and this can be extremely valuable and, and, and many times this is much more valuable cell block material than sometimes the passes especially if it's a difficult lesion and we need, we need to do immunohistochemistry on it. So that's that's how you use the what I call the pen technique and again you label this with the patient's name uh, and, and you send the air dried slides, the alcohol fixed material, and the cytolite specimen for cell block, which we could use for cell block. So that's that technique. And now having done that, what I like to do too is every time I do a pass, I don't I don't reuse the syringe, I don't reuse the needle, of course, um, even though it's the same patient. I think it's best to use a new needle and a new syringe with every pass. That way you don't get material clotting up the hub of the needle or clotting up into the syringe. You have a nice fresh uh, uh, aspiration needle and, and syringe with every pass and I think that works best for getting good material. Of course when we're done we just take, I just take the whole thing and put it in the sharps container and start with a new one. So I guess the next thing I'll do is I'll demonstrate the same FNA but this time using the Kamiko gun. And this again is, is, is the advantage of this is you can get good suction uh, good aspiration with this, but again, the, 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 you, you don't need that to get a good FNA sample. Again, sometimes I use this on lymph nodes when I'm trying to get a lot of lymphocytes and I can try to get a little bit more force that way, and sometimes it works well on thyroids. So really, the, the um, technique is very similar. We have, our, we have our patient, and again, I just start by taking the skin and giving it a good cleansing. And I do this every time, before every time I go into the skin I do this because this is how I you know, avoid getting problems with infection. Okay, so we've cleaned the skin and again, what I do before I go in, always fix the lesion between my fingers, that's key. And some people with this Kamiko gun, they, they take uh, sort of a pool cue approach, you can do that if, if it feels comfortable, and just go in to the lesion, again vigorously moving the needle back and forth, that's key. And in the process of doing that, I, I apply suction. So while I'm going in and out, back and forth, I'm applying suction, applying suction, until I get the number of of passes that I want. You won't always see a flash in the needle hub of blood or material, but, but here we're starting to see a little bit of a buildup. And be, the, this is key. Before I remove the needle, I release the suction inside the tissue. Otherwise, what happens is you take the needle out and the material sprays all over the place you've lost your pass. Once, it's, once I release the suction, I remove my fingers and I take the needle out and there I, there I haven't lost any material. And the next thing is I remove the syringe from the Kamiko gun. Same thing, remove the needle, 
pull back on the plunger. I have my slides ready. Express the material onto the slide and make my smears. The alcohol fix will go directly into alcohol and then the one that I diff quick I can smear with a spreader. I have night now I have actually two diff quick you know air dried slides. And again, I can I can I can do the hair dryer to use. I can use the hair dryer to air, air dry these quicker, or I can just do this, you know, waving the slides back and forth. Uh, this is this is not very bloody material, so you can see it's quite dry. And the same technique, just dipping it in the first solution, the second solution. third solution and you can see on this one for example I have quite a bit of material that I've aspirated on my diff quick stain slides and again, you can use the hair dryer to air dry these before you to dry some of the stain off before you put it in the cardboard. So that's uh, that one. And again, what we want to do is, for example, if this was a lymph node and I was worried about a lymph proliferative disorder, instead of staining in the cytolite, instead of I'm sorry, rinsing in the cytolite, I can rinse in RPMI, and it's just the same the same technique. I just put the needle in the RPMI instead of putting it into the cytolite or cyto-rich red in our case, allow some of the RPMI to percolate through the needle in the syringe, and then simply let the material out, and you'd be surprised with how many cells uh, will be in there. And again, to do a good flow cytometric analysis, a good full panel, uh, generally need about a million cells. So when I'm when I'm worried about a lymphoproliferative disorder, a lot of times I'll do a whole pass or two, uh, more often two whole passes where I just rinse into RPMI and then I can get a good uh, specimen for flow. So again, after I've done that, uh, I'm done with this syringe and needle and it goes in the sharps container. And um, of course we label, we label the things with the patients, the slides, the uh, cyto rich red, the RPMI label with the patient's name and, and you can submit it. So now moving on for my for the last technique I'll, I'll demonstrate is just really a freehand technique using just the needle. And I think this is popular in Europe uh, and again I've, I've known some endocrinologists that really like doing this and they do it with a lot of success. So in this case we just start with the, with the needle. And as always, with our patient, we cleanse the surface of the skin. And with this technique, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the, the needle. We're not going to use any syringe. And you, you can really see how using this technique, really the FNA, the base of the FNA is not suction. It's just using the needle to disrupt the tissue and get material up into the hub. What you can do for this is you just take the needle. Most people hold it by the hub. Again, we always want to fix our lesion of key importance before entering the, the skin with the needle. And I just take a smooth motion in with the needle 
and just really just vigorously back and forth in and out of the tissue. And we're just using the needle, the motion of going in and out of the tissue to disrupt the cells and get them to go up into the hub of the needle, into the, into the needle shaft. You can see how, how vigorously I'm, I'm moving this needle in and out. This is really key. This is what gets good material. Get them ready to come out, come out, put the gauze, tell the patient to hold. And in this case, we put our plunger in the syringe. And again, we smear our sides and we're ready to go and stain. And again, we alcohol fix one of the slides. I'm going to share with you a trick uh, that, that I learned in my training. That in which you can kind of salvage some of that material from the hub of the needle if you have this problem. Uh, now you, you need to be really careful with this and, and, and uh, be, pay attention because uh, sometimes uh, you, you're dealing with, an, uh, with an, a needle that has no syringe and there's a risk of sticking yourself. But what I've done and what I've been taught is you can take the needle and it, this works really great with a, with a rubber uh, stopper tube like a blood tube but I've also seen it used with a pencil eraser. You just stick the needle well into the pencil eraser, like that. So it kind of gives you this kind of a, a, a thing. And put it down by the slide. And as you can see, I'm flicking material from the hub that got stuck onto the slide. Just, just with this flicking motion like this. And all that material that was stuck up in the hub is now being flicked onto the slide. And you can see there's a fair amount that I got out just by doing that flicking. And again, it's the same process. You take your slide, make a smear, which you can stain with, with diff quick or you can immerse in alcohol. And that material that would have been lost, stuck in the hub, now is, your, your, is available to make smears with. So again, it's a, it's a technique that I don't always use. But when I end up in a situation where the material dries inside the hub and I can't express it with the syringe, it, it sometimes works. And I've used uh, just a regular pencil eraser. Uh, you can also use, uh, like I said, a rubber stopper tube. That works very nicely, just like a blood draw tube. Uh, and uh, you can sometimes salvage a biopsy pass. So that's really everything I wanted to go over uh, as far as the procedures and, and doing the FNA biopsy. And, you know, I hope that you found it interesting or, or hopefully some of these uh, tips useful. And at ProPath, we're always uh, willing to help and support you in any way. And uh, uh, thank you for your time.